The Wood Knight is sponsored by I Would Like. Push blocks and push sticks vary in designs and in uses. Some like this when paired together are excellent at the table saw, while these are probably a little bit better suited for the router table. This is the push block that came with my jointer on my combo machine, which you can see in the background there. And it's okay. It certainly does the pushing thing pretty well. The grip is fairly good, but it has an issue with long boards where you may not have a lot of grip, particularly if it's a rough surface. Uh, these sort of pads just don't work so great. And one of the commercial alternatives around that is uh, a gravity heel system, which hooks onto the end of it so that you can actually drag it along rather than just relying on the friction of the push pad. I want to get a set of push blocks specifically for the jointer, though it'd be used at probably the router table and the bandsaw as well. That gives me that sort of heel thing. Now, micro jig have an option for that, but in Australia, it's actually pretty expensive. I think they're about 50 or 60 bucks each. And don't get me started on the gripper, they're uh, over $100 each. So this is my prototype that I've come up with. It is your standard sort of push block, though it is a little bit wider. It uses router mat material. Uh, and it has this gravity heel now. Again, this is a prototype, so I ha was sort of trying the feel for it. The handle shape is certainly not ideal. Um, the heel I cut a little bit short because I didn't account the thickness of the router matting, and it doesn't have a retention mechanism to stop it from falling out if you were to hang it upside down or something like that. However, this actually works really well. So we're gonna make a more advanced version, something that has at least been tested, so now I know what I'd do differently. So looking at our prototype, uh, we've got some 18 mil plywood. It's actually uh, 12 mil and six mil, so half inch and quarter inch glued together. Uh, I just need a little bit more thickness. You could probably make this out of hardwood or even pine, um, but plywood's nice and convenient. I used hardwood for the handle and this is a very rough shape just to test that I could hold it, that sort of thing. Uh, a bit of 6mm plywood to make our little hook. I'm thinking we'll probably put a bolt through there as the retention mechanism. And you're going to need some router mat. This is also known as a sanding mat. You can get this at most woodworking supply stores. It comes in a sheet like this. Uh, normally you'd put your small object down. You could sand or even route on it and it doesn't tend to bounce around too much. All right, so if we take a closer look at our prototype, you can see that it was one piece of plywood that I cut into three strips so that I could get this part here. So that's what we're gonna do first. So, we, so I think I'll go for the same sort of dimensions. It's about 18 mil off either side. And then we've chopped this bit off and then glued it back on so we've got the space up. I've got the heel mechanism from the prototype though. Uh, if you're doing this from scratch, obviously you wouldn't have this. Just grab whatever material you're gonna use for it. I'm gonna be using six mil or quarter inch plywood and that can be our space there. You want it to fall down fairly easily so when we're gluing it up, we'll remove it after clamping. Alright, so this is probably the most important joint as this is going to be the weakest part. So make sure you get good clamping pressure on that. And for the main part of the body, uh, I'm just going to put my spacer in, slide that up till it butts up against it, and get some clamps onto this.
I found that the best way to cut the route on that was just with a knife. I found scissors didn't cut too well. Strike my line on there. And across. Just a few passes and it'll come away rather than trying to get through it all at once. I'm gonna use some contact adhesive uh, I'm not sure whether this is a good brand or not. I don't really use the stuff. So the general idea is that you apply it to both surfaces and then after five, or once it gets touch dry, um, you can push the two surfaces together and then they will bond. So I'm just using an acid brush. I re really just want a light coat because if I put it on too heavy on the router mat, it'll seep all the way through. Right, I'm going to leave that to dry for about 5-10 minutes. I'm going to pass out from the fumes in the meantime. I'm going to press it onto the melamine. Um, hopefully it won't stick too much to that. I can apply some pressure and it'll all be good. Gonna leave it like that overnight and come back to it tomorrow when it smells a bit better. All right, so we're done. Um, <coughs> in hand feels pretty good. I'm surprised the handle uh, worked out both better and worse than what I expected. You got a bit so you can rest your thumb there for a little bit more power. Uh, and that's from the push block I had on my jointer. It had the same sort of thing there. Uh, as well as a bit of a thumb groove there, which just doesn't quite work out. I think, I'd, I think I'll reiterate on this design a few times until I find the handle shape I really like. However, the rest of the pad is great. This is a much grippier material than what's on the commercial push blocks I've got. This may wear out quicker, I'm, I'm not entirely certain. Uh, and the gravity heel, it's kept in place with the dowel. I forgot to drill for a bolt beforehand, but I figure should I have an issue where the heel snaps off and I need to replace it, I can always drill out that dowel and put in a new one. <coughs> Probably should have made that a more exacting fit, but I was using up scraps, so whatever. And yeah, it retracts when you have it upside down so that if you're pushing a wide board or say you're using it on the router and you don't want the heel to stick out, it won't. But it will fall down automatically, which is great. So really should do a test at the jointer and we'll see how we go. All right, so this is probably a little bit short to be testing on, but it works. Uh, I don't have anything longer at the moment that I can uh, joint to test it out. Initial reaction is this is great. I'll be making another one. I uh, really like the larger surface area. That's probably the key thing. Um, apart from a handle that does fit my hand a little bit better, the larger surface area and grippier material is much better. Gravity heel is nice because it becomes simple and stupid to be able to join something. You don't have to worry about it slipping, particularly on rough sawn timber where these pads will make great contact with smooth timber, but when it's rough sawn, it's not always even, so it can be difficult to get a good grip on it. There will be plans for this, well, a cutting template for the handle and maybe a dimensional drawing. Um, either on Patreon, if you're a Patreon subscriber and watching this a few weeks early, or in the description below for the rest of you. 
This has definitely inspired me to look at making my own gripper. In Australia, they go for over $100 each, which is a fair bit of money. Uh, so this sort of material works fantastic. I'm really surprised having a custom handle work. Really feels good and gives me a bit more control. So uh, look for that in a future episode. Thanks for watching.